today I want to talk to you guys about phlox. So once these have fallen off, what's left actually looks a lot like seed. So it's uh, it's kind of useful, I guess, if I show you what the actual seeds look like. Collecting these seeds are really easy. You could snip them off and then throw them into a paper bag. You can also just come across with your hand and pull them off. And then I like to just roll them around in my hand a little bit until, of course, with two hands is always better, um, and throw away the extra. And now I've got these seeds. Now, like with all seeds, um, try not to put them in plastic. Try to put them in paper because the paper will breathe and they won't uh, develop mildew or mold or anything like that. Um, and then after that, I'll put them in a little container with some rice to make sure that they're going to be completely dry and ready for me to plant out next year. So that's flock seeds. Considering how tiny the plant is, these are pretty big seeds. Okay, so these phlox are really quite small. They're only about a foot tall, and they don't have a ton of seeds, so I can definitely see them. If it just has loss of this stuff, this is not the seed. This is the case that the seed would have been in. When these guys have already fallen and gone away, um, and have been sprinkled all over the ground, and they're going to grow, you're left with these things that look like they potentially could be seeds, but they're not. Let's see what that is. Okay, but this stuff here, this is not seed. It's only these big balls. Now they are not brown, so they're not done. You wanna wait until they're dry. And I have patiently been waiting for these <laughs> beautiful pink phlox to finally be done and so that I can harvest some seeds. Now, down here, sometimes, and it's probably a little early, there's a good chance that we will find some little phlox babies coming up. Flux are amazing plants because they grow uh, for a really, really long time. They come in lots of different colors and they can be really tall. In fact, right over here, that one that's huge, it's about uh, five feet tall. It's uh, five, a bit more than five feet tall, so it's well over my head. That is a flux as well. It's a pink flux. And all of these ones, these ones I bought at the local nursery, but um, these guys I'm going to grow, or these seeds I'm going to grow next year. When you harvest your seeds in the fall, you can, depending on what they are, as long as they're hardy to your area and they're going to self-seed, they're known for self-seeding, you can take those seeds, walk to the new place you want the seeds to grow, and put them in the ground, plant them. When you plant your seeds, plant them just barely under the ground. If they're micro tiny seeds, keep them really high. And if they're bigger, so let's say this is like two millimeters wide, so we can times that by three, so we could plant that about six millimeters into the ground or a little more than a centimeter, and they would be fine. Um, and it's also not a big deal if a squirrel came along and moved the seed up or down, there's a good chance it'll still grow. It's not an absolute science that the seed must be a certain depth, but some seeds do want to have sunlight and others don't. So it is useful to take a moment to look it up just in case. I'm Scarlett. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. <laughs> Toodaloo guys.